in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program known here on the internet. And y'all say this with me now. I'm known as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub nub seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Brothers and sisters, we who are the oppressed, we who are the discriminated against, made mockery of, the victims of racial hatred, victims of debauchery, those of us that may refer to ourselves as black, African American, and so many of these other descriptions, but what we have in common is that having dark skin, being born in this nation, in this civilization, we are much hated. And whether we turn to the left or to the right, east or west, south or north, there is death waiting for us. So in Christian religion, it says, although we walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. But there are many Christian people. And we say this in sincerity, but yet and still we lock our doors. Some of those calling themselves Christians, you have much guns and ammo in your house. You believe in Jesus, you believe in God, but the fear in the valley of the shadow of death, you are so afraid that you don't believe your God, you don't believe Jesus can protect you from that which brings fear. So we are in a hypocritical and awkward position in this day and time. What could help us in hindering or making us less fearful is the unification of the black man and woman in America. No matter what you call yourself. Whether you like it or not. And I don't care how many Caucasian friends you have, how many Japanese friends you have, or, or Indian friends, and all your friends that you think that you have. In this country, the reality is this nation, in fact, this world that we live in at this time, it is divisive. Everybody is looking out for their family, their country, their clique. That is why in America, you have the pink or Caucasian neighborhood. You have the Japanese, Asian community, the Irish community the Haitian community, the African community, the Mexican community. Everybody is commune to themselves except black people. We are trying to force ourselves among the Caucasian people, force ourselves among the Mexican, force ourselves, well, actually, they come into our neighborhoods. And we do force ourselves to their business because we have failed to create business on our own. We love wearing weaves, but we don't make the weaves ourselves. 
We like driving fancy cars and wearing fancy shoes, but we don't make the shoes and we don't make the cars. So we force ourselves on others and they are happy to take our money. But when you have a, a, an economy, when you have a nation in the process of falling, this nation, this future Babylon that is described in your scripture, in fact, it could be any nation. In history, there have been many great civilizations and countries or, or nations. They have gone up and they have fallen. America is not beyond destruction. America is not beyond falling. And what is so mind-boggling, ironic, and really sad and pathetic is that your destruction is not coming from a foreign power. It is not even coming due to nature. It is self-destructive. So you are living in the valley of the shadow of death and you do fear evil. You have a great God that you claim you believe in, but you fear. And your actions show that you fear. You can say, I fear no God but Allah. I fear no God but Jesus. I fear no God but Yahweh. I fear no God, whatever you refer or describe or claim is your God. There is no doubt that in this valley of death that you fear and your God or the belief in your God is not enough to stop you from having that fear. But again, to lessen such fear in any community, in any family, when we can depend on our father, our mother, our brother, uncles, and cousins, the more united a family is, the less fear that you will have. This is a fact, and you will see this in the animal kingdom, among the lions and hyenas and elephants, when you have a strong family structure, not just a mother and father and their children, but cousins and uncles and aunts and grandmothers and grandfathers. That family strength lessens fear because not only do you have to deal with one individual, you have to deal with the whole community. There is no such thing as a black community because to become a community, those involved in this specific location must be able to commune and the black man and woman in America, we have yet accomplished and be successful in communing to become a community a, to a community because we lack and have a failure to communicate. And as long as there is no communication, there is division. And division equals in our situation ultimate death and extinction. And perhaps that is a good thing. Because only the worthy, only the strong, only those who are flexible and can change in this life will survive and live. Those who are, are unable to change and survive and take advantage of their collective are destined to extinction, destruction, and death. So we are already a destroyed people. We have already suffered destruction and we are divided. So the only 
other options that we have left unless there is a drastic change is extinction. Death and extinction. If this is what you want, if this is what I want, then continue this behavior, continue this mentality, and surely as the sun rises or seems to rise, you don't have to worry and about the fear in the valley of the shadow of death. You will be a part of death. Your body and our bodies will be in the ground, in the valley of death. The only thing that can prevent this, brothers and sisters, is our unity. But the black man and woman in America, it seems as though that is so, so very difficult and hard. Why is it so difficult and hard for us? Even among these who say, I'm black conscious. I'm awakened. How can you be awakened? But you are divided and allow anything to keep you from community, to keep you from unity with your black brothers and sisters in the same condition that you are in. It is unity or death. As times in this country get more difficult, you will see the white community begin to look out more for itself. The Mexican community will look out more for itself. The Japanese, the Indian, all these various communities would begin to look out more so for themselves. There would be no pretend to be a melting pot. Whatever resources that we are able to attain, it would benefit our family, our community. But when you are in a divided community, a community that has not communed, as time gets more difficult, than those who lack certain resources, lack community, they will be the first to suffer. And so the white community or Caucasian or pink community and all these other various communities, they know, <laughs> they already know that the black man and woman in America, you don't have your act together. So they are getting their guns and they are preparing for you and me from out of these great cities, wherever we are found. They know since we don't have a real community, when food becomes scarce, when things, when water gets low, when resources become scarce, when the government begins to cut off all these different welfare systems and things of this nature, these other communities, although they are also dependent, but they are, they have communed, and they, many of them have already planned for a day of reckoning in a nation that is falling. While some people are taking life serious, the black man and woman is twerking, getting drunk, watching pornography, getting high. And while you're doing all these things and not taking life seriously, you're not watching the destruction of this nation that you're living in. You're not taking seriously the valley of the shadow of death. And as I speak, if you look up above black folks, you will see the vultures beginning to circle because it's a matter of time. Time is running out for you, black man and woman, to get your act together and get serious because soon if you don't, you and I, we will enter the realm 
of no return. And your fate will be sealed. And there is no other place for us to go. Except death and extinction. Is that what you want? Then continue these childish and infantile behaviors. Is that what you want? Then don't tell me that you love your children. Because you have guaranteed death for your babies. There is no future for them. And maybe that's why so many black children behave the way they do. Because they already know the only future they have is death and extinction. Is this a fact? Is this fallacy? Will we guarantee that such a thing would be true? If you love your children, even if you if you don't love yourself, if you love your babies for real, then we must take the correct actions so that we don't become victims of living in this valley of the shadow of death. So that we may stand up and say, I fear no evil. And not be fake. And be real. What brings me to this particular subject matter. Is the division among black people. Brothers and sisters. You don't have to like me. You don't have to agree with everything I say. In fact, you could even hate me if you want. But the bottom line is we are all that we have. I'm going to say that again. You can hate me. You can disagree with me. But when it's all said and done, we need each other in order to survive. In order to not become extinct. In order for your babies. To have a future. Otherwise. There is no future. And there is no future in the front. You can pretend. Like there's a future. But without black unity. I'm going to say that again. Without black unity. You have no future. Only further oppression. Further discrimination. That's the only thing that you have. Further continued exploitation. Continued enslavement. Whether that be voluntarily or involuntarily. We must have black unity. Earlier. This uh, day, I met one of my brothers who soldiered with me when I was a teenager in the nation of Islam. And every time we see each other, it is wonderful. It brings us back to those days being young men wearing a bow tie out in the street with the final call newspaper knocking on doors, doing whatever we could within the parameter of what we were taught to try to awaken up a sleeping people. And that was a few years ago. And I'm still trying to do the same thing. How long are we going to stay asleep? You stay asleep too long. It is considered death. And what do we do with dead people? Well, first of all, we want to find out why they died. Then after we find out where they died, give them an autopsy, drain them of, of the blood, there's no need for it anymore, and we place them in the ground. That is the future for you, brothers and sisters, if you do not unify with one another. You don't have to like me. 
You don't have to like me. You don't have to agree with me. You can hate me. But we are all that we have. Nobody else cares about you. Nobody else cares about us. So, as always, I met this brother, and we talk, and he's a brother who soldiered with me under the leadership of the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. And although I no longer am part of that organization, I respect Minister Farrakhan and the brothers and sisters in the Nation of Islam because hopefully we want the same thing. And this brother, although he also, he's not no longer an active member of the Nation of Islam, but he still loves Minister Farrakhan and Minister Farrakhan's words and teachings still carry weight with him. Now, I can talk with him about almost anything, but when I began, or if I praise Louis Farrakhan, then this brother is all hyped up because he still, he still has a connection and love for everything that Louis Farrakhan says. And that is all right. That's his business. And I have nothing against him. And as long as you praise Louis Farrakhan, it is great. But as soon as I, as I began to question the ideology of Louis Farrakhan and some of his actions and things of this nature, and even the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, and I tell this brother, I no longer even believe in God. Then this brother falls all apart. You cannot, we cannot have this type of attitude in this day and time. Why do we get so emotional because somebody disagree with us? I have been on YouTube making videos since 2008. I have never become angry at no one for being in disagreement with what I say. Period. I'm not going to call you an agent. I'm not going to call you a troll. I'm not going to call you a spy. I'm not going to call you a... I'm not going to... I'm not going to say that you're stupid. I'm not going to say anything. You just disagree with what I say. But I'm still your brother. And we know who the enemy is. We should have a common purpose and a common goal that we agree upon. And nothing is going to divide us from that. But there are those, black men and women, on social media. You are so divided. And you so crazy. And insane. And yes you are crazy and insane. Because. We are all that we have. But you will hate me. Because I disagree. With something that you said. You hate me. Because I don't believe in God. You hate my guts. And some of y'all will even. Threaten to murder and kill somebody. I'm an agent. I'm a hypocrite. I'm a troll. I'm a nobody. Because we disagree and challenge something that you say. As long as we praise you, it is all right. As long as we feed your vanity and your ego, everything is all right. And because of your Obsession with your own vanity, your own ego, your your want to, uh, your celebrity seeking, obsession, delusions. You can't stand, and you can't believe somebody would actually disagree with you or really believe 
that you could be in error and wrong? Do you believe in the Caucasian community or or Asian community or Mexican? Do you believe those people agree with everything somebody said 100%? But they are smart enough to know we are all that we have and they're looking out for themselves. But black folks, you are so destroyed. We are such a destroyed people. We don't know no better. And all the things that we get angry over, most of the time, it is petty. You have an infantile mentality, childlike mentality. But you claim to know who the real enemy is. The real enemy is not the reality is temple on earth. The real enemy is the racist. This condition that has caused us to be so divided. That has made us so hate-filled against another black man or woman or child. I don't expect big views from you because y'all like popular stuff you like things to make you feel good I'm not here to make you feel good I'm not here to stroke your ego I'm here to bring you reality and tell you exactly how it is whether you like it or not I'm not here to help you get high I'm not here to feed your delusions that some spaceship or a gremlin or spirit or a spook gonna come and do something for you. Ain't no spook spirits and gods gonna help the Caucasian community or none of this. They talk it, but you see other actions. Just in case God don't show up, we better be prepared. And then you said God only help those who help themselves, but you sit around and don't do nothing. And the first priority that you should take upon yourself is the unification of us as a people. God help those who help themselves, plural. Plural, meaning more than one. If you do not want to unite with your brothers and sisters, again, you don't have to agree with nobody. You don't have to even like them. But we are all that we have. When you are in a survival situation, brothers and sisters, we are in a survival situation. Either we will survive or we will die. And in a survival situation, you will eat. That which you normally don't eat. Some of y'all say, man, I don't, I don't eat no pork. In a survival situation, if you want to live, and there's some pork chops available, you're going to eat those pork chops. Pork, pork chops. Pork chops. In order to survive, you will eat roaches, bugs, tarantulas, You would do what you have to do in order to live. We are facing a survival situation. When you are in a survival situation, you don't have to like me. I don't have to like you. But we need each other and we stand a better chance combining our talents, combining our knowledge, combining our resources so that we can live. Once we get up out of a survival situation, then I can go my way, you can go your way. But you want to know something about survival situations? Survival situations get people close. And survival situations make families. It makes unification. And you begin to see something in a person that you thought that you had hatred for. You find out perhaps maybe I was wrong. Maybe I have to look at this differently. 
in a survival situation. But see, right now, y'all are comfortable. You got YouTube, Facebook. You get three meals a day. You're doing all right. Get the sex. Well, some of y'all do. Some of these pathetic black males, they, they're not getting the sex or whatever that they're looking for. So they are complaining. They, they get upset. But anyway, all of you are comfortable right now. How can you be comfortable? How can you be comfortable living in the valley of the shadow of death? I don't, I'm not comfortable. I don't know about, I don't know how y'all do it. But y'all smile and you're going on vacation next year and y'all just living it up like there's a future. And your future is beautiful, but all around you, the cave is falling in and you don't see it. Or you don't care because you. I guess you said, well, since I'm going to die, I might as well live it up. Is that what y'all doing? Since you know that you're going to die, might as well live it up. Because there's no future anyway. Those who are ready to commit suicide, they can think like that. And maybe that's what many of you are doing. You know that it's over. So you just want to enjoy yourself. You don't have to like me. You can hate me. And that's that's all right. But brothers and sisters, the only thing that can save you, can save us. And if you believe in God, then even God wants this. God wants the unification of the descendants of slaves born in America. We are all we have. Nobody else is going to care about us. They are ready to murder us wholesale. And just like Elijah Muhammad said, you can take it or let it alone. The reality is temple on earth ministry. For those of you who hate me, disagree with me. And that's, that's fine. That's fine and, and dandy. You really don't understand what this ministry represents. And it does not represent none of those things that you already know. None of them. It is the evolution of those things that you know. Taking it to its final destination. To his final point. The reality is temple on earth. Ministry. This ministry represents. The rehabilitation. Of a destroyed people. These who are the descendants of slaves. Born in America. No one else. Is going to rehab you. No one else wants to see you. Healed. So we must. Heal ourselves. These people. This is why you have no community. Because you have not been rehabilitated. When you allow these divisions to keep you sick. Then something in your mentality must be destroyed. Something in your mentality must be healed. Those who claim that they are waking are still asleep. In fact, I would say you are a sleepwalker. This ministry represents a people who needs to be rehabilitated so that they can no longer depend on the racist Caucasian pink slave master and his children. These who are black must begin and learn how to depend on themselves. Even to the point, listen to me, even to the point that you must do without your God. The only reason why you have religion, the only reason why there's a Quran and a Bible and these religious spiritual teachings are for those who have gone 
off, as they say in Islam, off the correct or the right path. You are sick. You are crippled. You are blind. You are handicapped. You are insane. So you need a prophet of God. You need a teaching. Somebody who is civilized because you and I, we have been turned savage. So you need somebody to come and bring us a word to take us up out of our uncivilized ways. To make us where we were once blind. Now we can see where we were once lame. Make us walk. And once you become healed, if you can see, you have no more need for contacts. You have no more need for eyeglasses if you can see. If you are no longer lame, you don't need a cast on your leg anymore. You don't need a crutch. The Quran, the Bible, these religious teachings, they are crutches. They are casts. It is a medicine for those who are sick. But once you are healed, once you are no longer sick, then now you should be in a evolutionary process where once you was a child, now you begin to mature. You're no longer a child of God. You become God and God don't need a crutch. God can see. God can walk. God can talk. God brings life. God makes something out of nothing. But you're still praying. To God. Gods don't pray to God. And you still call yourselves children of the Most High, children of God. Children still depend on their parents. God don't depend on nobody. God is self sufficient. You don't keep a band aid on a wound when the wound is healed. The Bible and Quran, spiritual, religious teachings is a band-aid for people who have been injured and hurt and cannot work. But in the scriptures, it says once you become healed, once you begin to mature, then God requires work. And some of y'all don't want to do the work that's required. The reality is tip on earth represents a mentality. Although I appreciate you, God. I appreciate the crutch. I appreciate the eyeglasses. I'm healed now. And now I'm learning to become God myself, just like my father. My father is God, and now I'm becoming God. When I was a child, I spoke and acted like a child. But when I become an adult, when I become mature, I put childish things behind. I no longer need those things. Now that I can walk, now that I can run, I don't need a crutch no more. But you continue to need the Bible and Quran. And even Elijah Muhammad said, the time for those books is over. If you ain't learned now, if you have not been healed after all these thousands of years, if you are not a God by now, there is no, there is no help for you. What happens in science? What happens to you when you have an injury and it never heals? Most times, it's a death sentence or you have to amputate the limb where the injury is that never healed. Either you heal or you will be amputated. You will die. We are living in the valley of the shadow of death. You are living in the valley of decision. Either you're going to be righteous or you're going to be unrighteous. Either you're going to live or you're going to die. Your time 
of decision is running out, your choice will be made for you and me. Some of you are angry at me because I do not advocate homosexual behavior. It is an unnatural behavior. Again, I do not have anything against homosexual persons. But it is my responsibility to bring a message to help rehab a people. I cannot rehab a people by asking them to continue an unnatural behavior. And no matter what you bring, homosexual behavior is an unnatural behavior. It is something that was forced on us due to our sojourn under an oppressor who practices unnatural behaviors, freakish behaviors. Homosexual behavior comes from the exploitation of women and children and incarceration, an unnatural circumstance. As long as we've been under Western, Western civilization, it has been an, an unnatural circumstance. I represent rehabilitation of a destroyed people and there was no homosexuality even in slavery. Even in slavery. There was no homosexual activity. Only until we began to integrate with an unnatural people then we begin to show the same sicknesses of our conquerors or oppressors. There are those who are angry with me because I do not also advocate interracial relationships. You cannot re rehabilitate a people, a destroyed people, by asking them to integrate with the same people who caused their destruction. That's common sense. That's common sense. You cannot ask them to romance and sleep with the people, the children of those who caused this condition to begin with. It makes no difference whether or not these are the actual people. But in the subconscious, it is still there. We must regain our dependence. Some of us are in love with Caucasian people because of our condition. This is an unnatural condition. This is a forced relationship. When you get to the... For, an, for a quick example, many of you have dogs at home. The only reason why that dog likes you is because of this unnatural relationship. If this dog was in the wild, if this dog was in its natural state of being, that dog would not care nothing about you. It would not be your friend. Now, there are always exceptions to the rule because even in the natural world, there's a possibility you might be able to make a friend with a wild lion or wild cheetah or elephant or something. But it's not the way that you see it right now. We run around, want to sleep with the enemy. The very people that cause our condition. That's unnatural. You are not on equal footing. Now, I love justice. This ministry represents freedom, justice, and equality for all people. And the homosexual person, you will get justice from me. But also at the same time, it must be known. And the reality is, this is an unnatural relationship. Unnatural behavior. Interracial relationship is an unnatural behavior. But you will be treated with justice and treated with fair. There is no hate towards nobody. Because you do not advocate 
homosexual behavior does not mean you hate homosexual people. Some of these persons are the most sweetest, kindest people on this planet, as well as those who are involved in interracial relationships. However, this ministry represents a collective of people who represent and would become the catalyst of a new generation of civilization. They cannot come into and cannot attain the right, correct state of mind by the practice of these behaviors. Now, if you want to continue to live in your delusions of this false melting pot, please be my guest. I don't hate you for it. It has not worked. Has not worked for 400 years. And it will not work because those of whom you want to integrate with don't want to integrate with you. That's the bottom line. It is not that black people can't get along with Caucasian or pink people. They are not interested in you unless there is some benefit. Entertain me. Fight in my army. I want your big old penis. I want your vagina. They will never give you power. They will never give you control. They do. They will never give you true equality. They like the master-slave relationship. Who are they? They are so special that you have to beg and plead and you want to mix and integrate with them so much. That's because you don't have a love of self. In order to re rehabilitate a people, you, they must learn how to love themselves. How can you love yourself laying in the bed with somebody else, especially when that somebody else was the represents and come from the same people that cause you to hate yourself? Makes no sense. Justice does not mean I have to sleep with you. I have to romance you. It just means we are able to get along in this world. You don't have to like me. I don't have to like you. But we can work together so our lives can be peaceful enough so that we can enjoy this short time on this planet that we as a religion says, been blessed with. The best solution is separation. For those who don't want to separate, those who don't want to exodus, that's your business. Don't try to force your crap on other people. But that's what they try to do. You, I do not force my opinion on you. But you have so many of these folks, they get angry and upset. They want to try to force themselves on you. That's not going to happen. I don't care anything about this fake melting pot. As long as races, as long as races control this country, as long as races control this world, your melting pot is a delusion. It's not going to happen. And you're not doing anything against the races. Except sitting back in hopes they might change their mind. Why should they change their mind? They have power, control. They can have you anytime they want. Huh, why should anything change? A destroyed people must be healed, not made comfortable slaves. That's why you are called a dark European. You are a comfortable slave. That's why you are called Uncle Tom. That's why you are called Uncle Ruckus. That's why you are called a coon and a sambo. Because you are comfortable. If you are comfortable, then that's your business. Our people should know and have a choice. Those who want to continue to live with the slain master in harmony. And we know what harmony is. <laughs> We're living in it right now. If that's what you want, so be it. But every black man, woman, and child should know. And it should be their right 
if they want to separate and seek something better and different and rehab themselves and become and in generations return back to the original people of this planet but better then we should those who are black you should stay out of our business and get the hell away from us go with your master and be happy what you upset with me for go with your master and be happy but don't sit around and think that you black cause you're not you're a sellout black and African I don't represent that either those are concepts that come up out of Caucasian or pink supremacy I don't represent that either you and I we are beyond skin color if there was no racism there would be no color black there would be no African the reason why you think that way is because it's a response and a reaction to Caucasian or pink supremacy oh there's no such thing uh, white man ain't supreme over me you can say it all you want to out of your mouth but the reality is at this time, whether you like it or not, you follow his rules. And you can talk all that big, bad, bold stuff all you want to. He is supreme over the black man. He is supreme over this world. When the white man or the Caucasian pink people speak, everybody listen. Because if you don't, they might be dropping bombs on you, and you know, and, and you know this. You know this. A new heaven and a new earth, and the former things shall pass away. This ministry represents the former things passing away. A total, complete opposite of this life that you're living right now. Just like Martin Luther King said, I might not get that with you. In fact, I already know. See, we must think outside of the box and we must think in the future. We are more than black. We are more than African. And if you think this way, you stay right in the condition that you're in. You must think outside of, of this, this, this cage that your oppressor put you in, but now you willingly keep yourself in the cage. This is why some of y'all call yourself nigger. The Caucasian people called you nigger so much, now you have accepted it and embraced this derogatory, wicked, description of yourself and you try to justify it try to make it endearing loving just like the female women girls and women call themselves hoes and bitches because of the oppression of men the, this nasty word nigga came from racist and now yeah what's up nigga how you doing nigga Ho and bitch comes from men, corrupt men. And now the women, girl, I'm, I'm a badass bitch. I'm a badass ho. This is a symptom of trauma. This is, this is a symptom of mental illness. Now you have become what your oppressor made you voluntarily at one time if you call a woman a hoe and a bitch she'll go ballistic on you now she calls herself that at one time if you call a black man a nigga he'll get all upset now he calls himself nigga and you think that you don't have to be rehabilitated nothing in this world has rehabbed you you are still sick. 
That's why you are still in need of a bandage. The bandage called Quran, the bandage called Bible. Spirituality, and you're waiting on some spook, some doctor, great doctor, nurse, prophet, something to come up out from somewhere to come heal you. But if you was in your right state of mind, in your right body, the body is able to heal itself. If you scratch your skin, if you break your leg, this body, when it is healthy, and even when it's a little unhealthy, it can heal itself. You can't heal yourself. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with your immune system. Something is wrong with your DNA, your whole cell structure. Something is wrong. So the reality is Temple of Earth represents rehabilitation, a healing of self. You're not waiting on a doctor. Doctor been here. Doctor has already healed you from, the, from traumatic injury. Now you must learn how to heal yourself from these scratches and these little scrapes and cuts. Then stand up and stop being scared and realize where you are at and where and where are you at? We are living in the valley of the shadow of death and we do fear evil. So let us not, let's stop telling that lie we don't fear evil. Yes, you do. Every day. That's why you carry guns, knives, and you got everything in your house and cars and locked all up. Because you do fear. But in conclusion, let me say very clearly. Again, all these other issues, we can worry about that later. All we have is ourselves, brothers and sisters. If you don't wish to unite and help a black man and woman, then you have guaranteed the extinction and no future for the babies that you claim that you love. You are living in a nation that is falling. It's falling apart slowly but surely. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. And even though you might not see the, the, the full collapse, your babies will be involved and you have to prepare them. They have to have the right state of mind so they can survive this calamity that's right around the corner. You have to teach your children and let them know this is not Disneyland. This is the valley of the shadow of death. I love you. You can hate me, but I love you. And all these little things that y'all hate me for, dislike me, that don't mean nothing. All we have is ourselves. We got to work through all this petty stuff. Latch on to everything. We already know what we disagree on. Let's get strong and grab on to that which we can agree. And let's move on, become adults. That will lessen and make an easier walk through this valley of the shadow of death where we can lessen our fear of this great evil that has been upon us for a long time. Let us unite. Let us unite. Black unity. And at this time. Black power. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. The angel snuffing up seven. This was. And is. The reality's temple. On earth.